everybody, and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork, and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hello, hello. And awesome Brony reviewer, Silver Quill. Just thank you, thank you. Such appreciated. <laughs> thank you kindly. Wow, Silver, I can barely see you behind your massive ego. <laughs> <laughs> and the greatest Christmas present ever. Uh... <laughs> Oh, Silva has a soundboard. We are nobody's safe now. Nobody's safe. I have a soundboard too. We don't care about what you have, Norman. Oh. <laughs> oh. Minus is the tune of this review show, Aww. isn't it? Uh, like it. We're, we're we're in an uppity mood because of what we have to review today. I mm. definitely don't want to tackle this one, but uh, before before we start ripping it apart and tearing our hair off our heads. Let's tell the people what we are going to be reviewing. We are we are starting a new series, actually. It's one that we haven't tackled up until now. Uh, we are done with the micros. We caught up with the main series of the MLP ADW comics uh, to this date. And now we're going to start with the Friends Forever. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be reviewing My Little Pony, Friends Forever, issue number one, starring Pinkie Pie and Applejack. <laughs> That's... Pretty much the opinion of everybody who must have read this. Uh, <laughs> written by Alex De Campi, with art by Carla Speed McNeil, and colors by Jen Manley Lee and Bill Mudron. And right away, none of these people have ever done a comic on the main series or the micros or any other. And I think they haven't ever since. And it shows. First, we have a veritable who's that of uh, artists and uh, writers. So you can tell this this series that they're trying to launch is getting the utmost respect. <laughs> yeah. Funny that both the script and the letters are done by the same person, when usually the lettering is done by somebody else. And it shows right away that, yeah, the letters have been done by the actual writer. Uh, but... We, we should get down to, um, I, I'm gonna, like always, deliver the synopsis and then we're gonna go hip deep into spoilers to talk about what the comic is about and what happens in it. So, Pinkie Pie goes to participate on a, a Iron Chef style competition kind of thing, and Applejack just happens to be there to deliver a pie, but she gets confused by one of the competitors, and it's, uh, just a competition between Pinkie Pie, Applejack, and other two chefs, and yeah, that's, pretty much it doesn't it isn't it it's that's that's pretty much the entire synopsis that's what it is about right after that hijinks ensue there is a lot of slapstick and our heroes end up learning a valuable lesson i think i'm not sure this comic is confusing but yeah that's pretty much the story if you want to know more about it we are going to start talking about spoilers so hang on tight let's go for it yay Okay, so who wants to touch this one first? Because I don't want to. <laughs> reverse alphabetical order? Yes, uh, let's go for reverse of alphabetical order. So, I'll take the first shot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah. <laughs> this is going to be this is going to be a running joke now with the Friends Forever series. That is going to be interesting now. Oh, okay, let's go. Yes. Take the first the shot. The effects shall last forever. <laughs> so, oh, actually... the. The very first thing I want to comment on is uh, one of the covers, or at least I think the most well-known cover for this issue, featuring Team Pie and Team Cake mm-hmm. on the, the cover. And it looks like they're about to have a fierce competition. And you wonder, will they really be friends by the end? Spoiler warning, of course. And I find it kind of funny. The cover is enough to make this intriguing. It's it's the opposite of what happens in the in the comic. But I don't fault. I actually don't fault this comic for that. It, since the first issues of Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman, and the like, the cover has always tried to say, "Read this, not this is what's going to happen." So I guess the biggest props I give to this comic are the is the cover that makes you intrigued. Well, Silver, I I kind of do agree and disagree with you there. The cover for this is intriguing. Yes, we have Team Pie versus Team Cake, and you have a competitive-looking Applejack trying to outwit a uh, very spunky Pinkie Pie there. So we, you have the two of the, well, best ponies who can bake uh, pastries. Now, the art is awesome, but once you switch into the comic itself, it's questionable. 
like you said with Wonder Woman, Superman and Batman, those comics, how do I put it? The artists for the covers are the same person who did the comics itself. So you won't be deceived or you won't get a bait and switch when you pick up the comics. You know how it's going to look like. And here for the Friends Forever, we have great art. And when we go in, it's eh, okay. I agree with you that the art shift is, is jarring. And forgive me, this will be a very short tangent. Especially when I'm thinking of Wonder Woman comics. Mm-hmm. You've probably seen a lot of comics where Wonder Woman is uh, chained to a wall and there's a missile flying at her or some guy's trying to rope her with her own lasso. Uh, I don't remember, but carry on. Well, they, there have been many covers like that. And the people have kind of laughed that this comic that drew in a male audience to a rather feminist ideal, you know, this strong female superhero, she never wound up in those situations, but they lured them in with the promises of a, of a woman in peril. So it's kind of funny. You hook the audience with one image, but that's not necessarily a reflection of the story. Now, art, yes, you if the cover artwork is glorious and the internal artwork is really disappointing, then you're then that's it seems like an even worse deception. Top Cow Comics. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but Top Cow Comics were the guys who did uh, Witchblade and the Lara Croft Tomb Raider comics, and oh, they oh. have the same problem. Oh lord! Awesome, awesome covers, hideous in artwork inside, like hideous. You thought they hired Rob Life to do some <laughs> of the pictures in those comics? Seriously, they they suck. And not to compare the artwork in this comic to Rob Liefeld, uh, not to criticize Carla Speed McNeil uh, for her art style, but after you had such a varied amount of styles, you're going with this kind of kiddie, uh, uh, kind of like kindergarten style of art is very weird, but that's just, I'm, I'm skipping ahead because it's, uh, you, you're still giving your opinion, Silver, Norman, Norman hasn't even given his. Oh, no, um, I, I think I give mine because it, the story itself is, how do I put this? I, I don't want to go into stories first because this story is, well, not bad. I mean, in terms of story, this comic is not bad. But in terms of art, the thing that pulls me out of this is the lettering and the art. Those two things pull me out. Because when I look at it, it's really pastel and really full of bright colors. It's strange for me to say that in a pony comic. But if you see some of the other artists who did stuff, let's go for friend, no, sorry, micro series Twilight. That was another comic that was another bait and switch. But to me, it was good. Strange art style, but interesting story. This one, strange art style, interesting story, but it pulled me out of my expectations. I agree with you. The artwork is is one of the biggest detractions. This is the only comic of the of the MLP franchise I never bought. Hmm. I looked at it, I, I read about it online, and I decided, no, I'm I'm not going to support this with my money. You know, not like I think I can bring down a company just by not buying uh, one comic. But, you know, my money, my choice. True that, true that. The artwork, sometimes the colors are too vivid. They distract from the action. Sometimes the ponies are just drawn in these truly bizarre shapes. And the strangest thing of the artwork for me is the eyes. Very often it feels like they're either, the ponies are usually staring off screen. It's like they're looking past what they're supposed to be looking at. Mm-hmm. And you get that sense of disconnect. And so they, there's never that, that vitality or seeming organic quality that I witness in other uh, comics, especially uh, Andy Price's artwork and Tony Fleecy's. That's a big detraction. Now, I, I do have a lot of issues with the story, uh, the contrivances to get it going, the villain's motivations, and the fact that for a story that's supposed to be about Pinky and, Apple, uh, Pinky and Applejack saving the day, it's not those two who saves the day. 
So we'll and we'll get to that. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So James and I have often commented if we if we don't like the artwork, then this we comment on the story. If we don't like the story, then we praise the artwork. <laughs> what do you do when neither holds up? <laughs> well, that is that is the main the main problem with this comic, and I will agree with uh, I, I will agree with everything you said. Um, of course, this is coming out after we reviewed the Wild West arc in uh, in the main series, and I remember very well that we said. This comic is not as bad as that one, and I think I'm going to be, uh, oddly enough, I think I'm going to be the optimist one on this review, and I'm going to point out the things that I think are actually well done, because, believe it or not, even in this comic, there are a couple of things that I can actually like uh, that make me not hate it with a seething rage, because <laughs> it is such a, it is such a deviation from what we have in in the other comics that... I am all for deviation, I am all for changing things, I'm all, I'm all for making things different, but they change way too much. They made things way too different, and in making things way too different, they completely ignored what makes this comic series so good. And it's also kind of sad that this has to be the first issue on a new series, because if you're going to introduce a new series to your audience, this is probably the worst way to start it. Like this is this is probably the worst number one you can ever expect. Uh main series. The first issue, what do we have? Queen Crystal is taking over Ponyville like it's the invasion of the body snatchers. Mm. Uh, uh Crusaders, what do we have? We have Twilight Sparkle recovering uh a writer for uh for the sake of uh, literature in Equestria and Princess Celestia. And now there is coming uh, there is a new series coming up starring the bad guys and the first issue is going to be starring King Sombra. So those are first issues of series that start really well. This one didn't. And we are going to tell you why right now. So I think we should start reviewing it right away. Mm-hmm. So let's let's go for it. This one is going to be a short one. I can I can already tell you. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So uh, we start with Pinkie Pie and Sugar Cliff Corner. She's talking with the cakes and they are preparing. Uh, well, she's preparing for the competition that is coming out. The what is it called? The comp- what is the name of the? Well, the name of the comic is "The Pie Is the Limit." So I doubt that is the name of the competition. But um, I think it's, so. It's the Equestria Super Chef competition. The Equestria Super Chef competition. Oh I yeah, totally ninth yeah. annual Equestria Super Chef. Although contest, the, yeah. right out, right off the bat, however, most of this is. They're cooking pastries and desserts. Mm. Technically, they're bakers. Yeah. Good. yeah. There you go. I am in full nitpick mode right away. <laughs> no, but that, you're, you're absolutely right because if you want to do chef, you're usually supposed to prepare like first, uh, first course, main, uh, main course, uh, and then uh, I don't know. I'm not good with food names, but yeah, not all, not just pastries. Yeah, a good example for a show that kind of format was. Um, the food channel chop. Basically, you have the appetizer, the main course, and then the dessert. And then from that point on, you have four contestants. And if one fail the first round, they get they get well technically chopped and move on and stuff and stuff and stuff. So they're they're brutally chopped up. What kind of sickos <laughs> is Hannibal Lecter running this show? I don't know. It's good for <laughs> TV. Now you see my contestants. You must now bake the loser into your next concoction. <laughs> Oh, it's the new show starring Hannibal Lecter. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and a nice candy. Oh, <laughs> but anywho, uh, moving oh, on. Yeah, moving on. Uh, Pinkie Pie is freaking out, so she's going to the competition, walking very slowly as to not spill the recipes out of her head. What? <laughs> um, okay. And Applejack is just going there to deliver a pie. And uh, due to a couple of misunderstandings and just some hijinks, she gets confused with Marine Sandwich, one of the competitors, and gets taken into the studio. And apparently Equestria has TV cameras. Hey, this arcade machine, so why not? Actually, it has uh, television magic, which, yeah. you know, they say... The magic of television, but this is television magic. Mm-hmm. Brought to yeah. you by Jumbo Don. <laughs> Who's a pony with a television cutie mark. Uh, no comment. Moving on. And he's making, <laughs> and he's making a pass at every uh, every mayor in the audience. And well, possibly a few stallions. 
He, he totally is. That man is so luscious. But anyway, uh, we are then introduced to each one of the different um, competitors. Uh, we have like Summer Wonderhoof, who looks like Winnet Paltrow if she was turned into a pony. Uh, Blade Sparks, who apparently does fire things. Toffee Truffle, uh, who's... <laughs> there you I go. have strong feelings. <laughs> Very strong feelings. Uh, Pinkie Pie. And uh, uh, Applejack com- being confused by Marine Sandwich. And as it turns out, the real Marine Sandwich is watching the competition from the outside, who quickly calls Applejack an imposter, tries to get in, but then gets kicked out. Well, uh, first, th- I just want to know who gave Fluttershy that bad die job. No wonder she's <laughs> angry. Uh, she, you know, the, the, oh, God. Go ahead, go ahead. I was, uh, this, 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 okay, being a Fluttershy fanboy in, in one case... I like how dare you steal the look of my fave pony. But no. Uh it says something though when you've you've taken an existing palette and just swapped it with a pretty ugly color scheme. I mean it's so it's all dark colors. And granted, she's supposed to be the bad guy, but even even Trixie and the Flim Flam brothers have had bright pastel uh color schemes. It's kind of the thing with the ponies. In fact, there's the panel where Marine Sandwich is trying to maneuver through the crowd. A lot of the ponies are very dark color schemes. I feel like these artists were saying, okay, we've got all these background characters. Let's just paint them like real horses, Mm. browns and grays. Well, mostly it's just like that that takes some of the life out of Equestria. It's funny how much we depend on this place for bright colors. Mm. Yeah, that that is that is true. The way that Marine Sandwich looks, she looks like she, her color scheme is like they went to the bottom of a river and took some of the colors from there and just decided to plaster on on her. She looks really ugly, and the way that she's drawn, she does look really ugly. By the way, do you notice how from one page to another her eyelashes disappear? Inconsistency. Oh, yeah, yes. they go. Yeah, they are uh, from page eight to page nine. Her eyelashes get get. Banished is like they kick the eyelashes out of her. Wow. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, she swears revenge and says she's going to turn Applejack into her new, my, her latest masterpiece. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. Anyway, and <laughs> the the competition so starts. Uh, Pinkie Pie panics. She can't make any any recipes because the ingredients are laughing at her. Again. What? Uh, this comic has so many weird ideas. And this is where I actually have my one, th- one of the things that I actually really like of the comic. Out of the three critics that are in the jury, the Griffon critic is the best character in the entire comic. <laughs> I, I do like the um, pony there. She's Indian, looks like it. She and does. married. She has the, and married. What? Really? That's the dot on the head. Oh, oh, I thought it was right. a symbol of enlightenment. Really, I was—I've heard tell it's a sign of marriage. Uh, I got no idea. But well, anywho, moving I'll on. Have, I'll have to. Well, you can be enlightened and married. They're not mutually exclusive. True. <laughs> uh, but either way, yeah, I, I agree that I like the diversity of the judges: a pony, a griffin, and a buffalo walk into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then and and then one says, "Hey, hey, hey! Have you have you read the first issue of From Forever?" No. It sucks. <laughs> oh boy, not as much as the Walrus one. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank Yay. you. I'll be here all week. <laughs> we'll get the TV waitresses. Uh, but no, seriously, the the the, Griff, the 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 Griffin critic is to me the the best character in the in the comic because he is like any other. Uh, a Spanish film critic that we have here that they are over the top uh, they see things where they're not there He's, uh, he exaggerates every single aspect of every single food that he takes and he's just so full of himself that he's actually kind of endearing so I really like the Griffon character a lot um, he, he makes for good comedic value, I like it is it a male? I got the impression the Griffon was a female I, I I always thought that he was a guy. Uh, the way he looks and all that, he looks like a like an old crotchety guy to me. Really? He doesn't look female at all. 
So yeah, I get I actually get a female impression. Huh. Yeah. How do you mention it? But maybe maybe it's the eye, maybe it's the eyelash. Really? It's a, this is like a gender Rorschach test. Tell me what you see. <laughs> <laughs> but so it's, like playing a fi- it's like playing a Final Fantasy game. Okay. Oh God, Boy no. or girl? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but anywho, um, I, I think we, we're um, missing the point about one of the characters that we do not like, which was uh, Toffee Truffle. Toffee Truffle. Yeah. And during the intermission, she sniffles and cries about, well, it's being scared that she might not win the competition because, well, she wants the cash to fund her kind of... Um, restaurant? Yeah. yeah. It's, her, what yeah was her family food? restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's worried, she's kind of freaking out about it, and she thinks she's not going to win. So Applejack and Pinkie Pie get together to make some horrible desserts that uh will make Toffee's uh, Toffee's dessert look awesome. Yeah. And, and, for, and well, forget the other two competitors, they obviously won't do anything. Yeah. Oh yeah. They have they have no part in the competition <laughs> at all. Although you have to admit, uh that Vanderhoof whatever Winnet Paltrow pony, she makes a yeah, like what is that? Hey, I'm trying to look at that Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. Honestly speaking, honestly speaking, to me, doing this kind of, this, doing this sort of things, like sandbagging your own dish just to make the other person win, it's not real competition. In the FGC, they call this collusion. Knowing that both players don't play well and they just, well, play like crap because they know they're going to win and they just split the pot. My grief with all this is Applejack just won the first round. Mm-hmm. She is in a great position to take take the whole thing. The goal is to for is that Truffle wants to support her family financially. So why not just win and give her the money? Well, that's basically pot splitting. Pot split. What? Pot splitting. Um, giving pot the cash to. Oh. So yeah. I thought you said plot splitting. Which no. In this context, yeah, you... oh, you kinky devil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You worried me there for a mo- moment, Norman. Kids comic. Come on, give it PG, dude. <laughs> but uh, now, now, to this comic's credit, Pinky and Applejack don't even think for a minute about, oh, I want the money. They value another pony and her happiness and success above their own financial gain, and that's very noble. Yeah. I mean, that, that makes me like these characters. Mm-hmm. So it's not like this yeah. is irredeemable. Mm-hmm. I just think they could help her in smarter ways. Yeah. Honestly speaking, um, the reason why Toffee Truffle wants to win is because of the name or because of the title. Because here's the deal. You win the cash, you bring the title back home to the restaurant. With that title there, you're already popular. And people who sees it knows that, hey, this is the pony that won the competition. I bet her food is good. So let's go in there and try it. So she's not only won the cash, she also wants the title. Uh, but I I agree completely with, uh, with, with Silver. And his comment just made me realize one thing is that from what the cover was giving us, that perhaps this was going to be a competition between Applejack and Pinkie Pie, I cannot imagine those two fighting each other. Um, in any circumstance, especially after what we saw them interact like in the in the actual show, I don't see them fighting. I don't see them getting angry at each other. And I really like the fact that this comic sidesteps that plot and doesn't go with it. Instead, they work together to try and help this one pony that they have never met in their lives. Like they they have no business wanting to help uh, Toffee, yet they help her. And I really like that. So yeah, in that regard, uh, at least Applejack and Pinky are both. Uh, kept in character, which is more than we can say about the other comic that we reviewed last week. <laughs> right. It's yeah, it is. It is pretty much that that these two are well written, as far as keeping in character is. Now about how they resolve the conflict, that is another story altogether. But let's uh, not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, and we have... yeah, they they go they go ahead to prepare these desserts, and of course they make. Terrible desserts. Like Applejack makes something called Rocky Road, which is just dirt with worms in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and Pinkie Pie makes one uh, called Garbage Surprise, oh, which God. is like pickles stuffed with 
Blue cheese wrapped in garbage surprise. What the hell? Oh god. Well, he actually she lost me at blue cheese. Uh, I can't stand this. Um, I cannot. I cannot stand it either. <sighs> it, I think they put maggots in it to make it. Oh god! Ugh. No, come on. Moving on. But <laughs> yeah, and and this is this is my 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 favorite. Uh, dialogue in the entire comic, what the, the, the Griffon critic says, the, a dazzling deconstruction of the dessert genre is that that is perfect. That is so spot on, <laughs> like any Spanish reviewer will speak. They, um, no, seriously, they all speak like that. There is not a single humble reviewer in my country. They all speak <laughs> like this. And, uh, uh, hell, I saw people trying to make a comparison between, uh, the Iliad with the, the trouble of Goku in Dragon Ball. I swear to God. <laughs> And this is just ridiculous. And I love this dialogue. And of course, because the Griffon is so full of himself, he gives the award to Pinky for the second round. Not without... Okay. Full Meanwhile, they, they lit the Indian pony on fire. Uh, uh, I call that a disqualification. <laughs> Somebody call 911. Now, uh, I, I will say, as much as we, we enjoy the Griffin character, I'm actually a big fan of the Buffalo. <laughs> big Angie. And I know for sure she's a female because she has a necklace, right? Yes. Yes. Totally the justification. Because yeah. guys would never wear a necklace. Oh. Mm-hmm. But I it just there's something about how direct and humble. It's delish, she says, of uh, Toffee's parfait. And yet, Toffee still loses. Now, if you lose two rounds, I'm pretty sure the title's beyond your reach, no yeah. matter what. I don't know. The voting system for this one is a bit sketchy because we don't have all three judges tasting the same dish. So, yeah. Plus, this is just a comic. So, let's move on. (laughs) Could it be be like one of those competitions where the first and second round mean nothing and it's just all decided on the last round? Probably. (laughs) Apparently, it is because we're about to see. Yeah, Uh, and in the the last round, uh, they... uh, the goal of the competition is to make your favorite recipe. Oh, oh, but I'm oh, sorry, but before that, we have to talk about the the rather overt moral that they throw in here. Mm. Oh, as to- as Toffee not confronts but talks to Applejack and Pinky, and pretty much get teaches them the lesson. And I think this is why I, I'm not really a big fan of Toffee. First, she's crying, and everyone jumps to sit to help her. Then she's giving them, she's talking about them wanting to win fair and square because she's so wise. <laughs> In it, I, I'm sorry, but she's starting to become your classic Gary Stu character. <laughs> Everyone wants to help her. Everyone wants to learn from her. Yeah. Uh, and I don't like it when the story does not support the moral. It, it's like, we okay, here's the moral. We're just going to tell you what it is flat out. Uh, you know, win fair and square, and then we're moving on, and that's it. And they're just like, that's so not what I enjoy about My Little Pony. It's when the moral is a theme throughout the plot. Yeah, and I watch it, and I watch it for the plot. Oh yeah, <laughs> and, the, and and they they, they hung wave it at the end. Oh God, no! Here we go. <laughs> ah, how long until that gets old? Perhaps until the end of the episode. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they. I'm going to see Go the batteries run out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, uh, I I absolutely agree with you. And not only that, not only is um, it's something that goes on throughout the entire comic, but it's something that they hand wave at the end, like, ah, it's, and then we have a thing that you have to learn and never be like that, that's it, the end. Yeah. And you're like, what? No. There is so much what in this comic. Oh, anyway. Uh, so yeah, round three, they have to make their favorite re- recipe, and I like how they go through each one of the other competitors, that um, this Vanderhoop lady, she doesn't know what is her favorite recipe, because she has been making food for all these other uh, uh, high society ponies. Um, the guy who likes fire, he just makes more fire. <laughs> Applejack just presents an apple, and Pinkie Pie starts throwing cream pies out. Uh, to everybody's faces. Are we sure they weren't still trying to throw the match? Because <laughs> knowing uh, Pinky and Apple, that's honest. Because Apple Jack likes apples, so why not? Pinky is no. just surprises. Yeah, yeah, I would. I wouldn't doubt that Apple Jack likes an apple concoction, but usually, a baking contest requires you to do something more than wash off an apple. 
Yeah. yeah I, if that were the case, I'd make Chef Ramsay my servant. I'm quite delusion <laughs> in this. Although, yes, to bring up your favorite character, Silver, the buffalo is very happy about the custard pie. <laughs> You're all missing right. out. This one is yummy. That's right. See, she just takes everything in stride. Yeah, she's so happy about it. It's 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 brilliant. But then finally we get to Toffee's uh, dessert. And this is another soft spot for me. It's uh, uh, it's a Dulce de Leche in sugar cookie cups. And yeah, sorry, I love the idea of a Spanish dessert being the winner. I call collusion. Yeah, completely biased. Biased. I call myself out on this. I have no excuses. <laughs> And yet, Toffee's description, they taste like happiness emoticon. <laughs> they oh put my it god, emoti- you're right, they didn't notice! <laughs> they put an emoticon in the thing. And meanwhile, they taste like happiness. Meanwhile, the sh- uh, the the fire guy, they taste like burning. <laughs> Pinky's pies taste like purple. Why not? What in the world? Oh, yeah, they the actually world. left the emoticon in there. I am noticing right now. What the hell? At least all three judges are sampling the dessert this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, instead of like uh, each one of them just sampling uh, only one, which is not how competition show should go. Yeah. <sighs> but this moment of elation is interrupted by the real Marine sandwich, wherein what Mr. Freeze would make if he ran out of materials and um, starts freezing everybody in uh, icing. <laughs> Transparent icing. Transparent ice, yeah. Okay, I, 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 forgive forgive me for harping on this, but who makes transparent icing? Ooh, this cake looks lovely. I know because I can see through the icing. <laughs> <laughs> I love the chocolate swirl decoration you did. I wish I could see the icing. <laughs> I seeing what you did there. Oh, God damn it. But... <laughs> Norman is the one with the pants. The pants are not with me today. Uh, but yeah, she starts freezing everyone. Uh, That's she just the freezes tip of the icing the... Bird. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> Once more, the the buffalo judge proves to be awesome and quite a badass actually, because she's like, she's like, don't worry, just stay behind me, Ganji. And <laughs> she's like taking taking all the icing on her, and she's like, ah, I'm not moving. That's that was cool. Yeah. Um. But, meanwhile, yeah. tw- meanwhile, Twilight Sparkle, the most magical unicorn in the land and one of the most powerful, is trapped in transparent icing. Well, no, she, I'm not going to let go of this. She learned from her previous issue not to intervene in equestrian. Um, yeah, you know. don't you remember? Uh, don't you, Mary, Mary Sandwich is a sentient thinking <laughs> being of equestrian. She has to be civil. Which is more than I can say for some of the comic writers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I can't believe I went there. Let's move on. You went it's there. Awesome. Oh, this specter shall haunt many a comic from here on out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there is no way to prevent it from happening. Uh, oh. Marine Sandwich keeps freezing everybody. She freezes Applejack, and Pinkie Pie is like, What are we going to do? We need to get a, get, get a way to stop her. And. Uh, Toffee is like, don't worry, do you have a party cannon? And she's like, yeah. And she's like, we're gonna put my cookies inside the party cannon and we're gonna, we're gonna blast that into next Sunday. And that's exactly what they do. And I am looking at that party cannon and I'm thinking, that is the most uninspired party cannon design I have ever seen in my life. But it's the, it's that preponderance of grays and, and darker, less desaturated, uh, colors throughout this whole comic. And I think that is my problem. That is that is one of the problems that the comic has, is that the color palette is really uninspired. Is that this looks this looks like they, they decided to pick up the colors on a very grey day on a boring afternoon while there was not a single ray of sun in the in, in the sky. It was it's so it it's such a sad looking comic for something that is supposed to be so colorful. And I know I'm harping just on the party cannon, but it's supposed to be a party cannon. That doesn't look like a party cannon. It looks like a normal cannon. There is nothing party about it. Mm-hmm. It's a cannon cannon. Turns out Pinky grabbed the wrong model and now Marine Sandwich is dead. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> but, yeah, they put the 
bundle of cookies inside the cannon. They blast it onto Marine Sandwich's machine, making it explode in a yui gooey caramel. Ca- <laughs> really? They are actually making the onomatopoeia, the actual explosion. This is so lame. Anyway, <laughs> the, they freeze Marine Sandwich, they eat the icing out of the people. Somehow, this gives Toffee Truffle the number one uh, spot in the competition, and thankfully, the comic ends. Hey. Oh, no, no, James. James, what? you skipped something. Oh, no, you skipped what did something skip? very. You skipped when Marine Sandwich gets her just desserts. <laughs> That's in Whatever. the comic. You, you can't get mad at me. I, I know. I am not going to get mad at you, but I'm getting mad at the comic because, god damn it, it's like. Okay. What have we learned today from this comic? That's that, my that's my question. That Applejack and Pinky did not save the day. Pinky and uh, Toffee Truffle saved the day because Toffee is more awesome than Applejack apparently. Yay! I just feel like Applejack's role kind of gets usurped, and we're supposed to empathize, sympathize with Toffee, but we barely know her. This is I, I, oh, the okay. premiere. The premiere of Friends Forever. And they didn't focus on the friends. <laughs> oh, God. We're going to get to that on issue number five. <laughs> but, um, yeah, what I learned today is that if you want to make a comic that everybody is uh, going to buy and that is going to sell very well, because apparently this one uh, sold very well, but people didn't know any better, you just have to draw the, the ponies with very dead and li- uh, lifeless eyes that look outside of the screen and never at each other with a very, very flat color style, very childish, and I know, children's comic book, but seriously, this looks like it's out of a preschool book drawn by very boring people that have zero creativity. There is nothing interesting visual-wise in this comic, which uh, makes it very sad for me. It's like, this is supposed to be colorful, and it looks colorful, but when you look at it, it has nothing. It's like looking into a blank wall with like some scribbles on it, and that's it. Uh, I know, it has a few things that I like, it has a few things that I enjoy, but this is not a comic that I go back to. Mm -hmm. Now, I I do need to hold myself up in triumph for a moment, though. And this is very curious. On the second to last panel, when they're giving the blue ribbon, Vermouth Rue has spoken. I guess that's the Griffin's name. We're finding Mm -hmm. that out on the last page. That may be another flaw, that half uh, half the ponies in this comic go unnamed. Until like the end. Does anyone know what the Indian pony's name is? I don't. I don't think they ever say her name. Uh, yeah, I don't think they ever say her name either. And you're absolutely right. They mention uh, 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 the Buffalo Judge mentions uh, Bermuth names uh, names uh, once, once or twice. Yeah. Yeah, but I I was thinking for a moment I was thinking that was the name of one of the desserts because Bermuth is also the name of a of, of a drink. So I was like, what is this? <laughs> I could use a little of that right now. Oh, but. Uh, right. Oh, but, I could do some of that too. I, I do, but I do want to say that the buffalo says, and for once, she's right. So, I believe I was correct. The griffin is a lady. Mm. Lady. Okay. I it's was a wrong. man, baby. <laughs> yeah, this is just confusing it, all around. It's the crying game. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my gosh. But, but anywho, yeah. anywho, final no, thought well, game. Final thoughts. Final thought. You, you first, Silver. What can, what can I say? There are elements of good things here. I like the I like the diversity of the judges. I like that Applejack and Pinky are so other centered that they remain these characters that I can cheer for. But I feel like the story loses focus. It the the, in, the new characters try to usurp the titular characters, and the villain. Some people said that they uh, they felt very sorry for Marine Sandwich. Whereas I just shake my head at how, at her presentation. I was jilted out of a TV show, so I will become a supervillain. <laughs> uh, and the sad thing is, that's not even the worst uh, the worst origin story I've ever heard. <laughs> uh, uh, but I just there's very little overall. The the plot is contradictory. It doesn't hold true to its own rules about the bait competition. And in the end, you're just like. This was a very poor outing and not what you wanted for your first comic. True that. True yeah, that. I, 
I absolutely agree. And I will have to say, regarding what you said about Marine Sandwich, um, it's kind of like, I don't understand why they have to turn her into the villain. We should have talked about Marine Sandwich now that I think about it, because the plot forces her to become the bad guy. Uh, she is just getting treated like, like, uh, like dirt. At the beginning of the comic, she's trying to get in, they kick her out, she's trying to get in again, she gets kicked out again. She kind of like gets forced against her own volition to turn into the bad guy. And I'm oh. like, what am I, am I supposed to be happy when they turn her into a frozen statue in her own icing, blowing up her contraption and just basically, I don't know, m- making her all miserable? So not only they confuse her and get, get her out of the competition, they, they, they defeat her like she's actually one of the bigger bodies. Like, Trixie didn't get treated this bad when she went to the uh, to Ponyville with the Alicorn Amulet. Now, of course, this all could have been solved if Applejack had just simply told them that she's not Marine Sandwich. Oh, wait, she did. <laughs> she did, several times, and they didn't pay attention. Why? Because la 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 la, I can hear you, I can hear you, la 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 la. Uh... So often in this show we criticize, oh, if the ponies had only said this, the, the problem would have been rendered moot. Uh, you know, if Celestia had just said, oh, that's my phoenix, she's about to burst into flame, don't worry about it. Or uh, that would, or Pinky probably said, I'm getting instruments to get rid of these Paris sprites. There you go, problem oh, solved. God. Yeah. Here, the ponies flat out say, I'm not Marine Sandwich, you've made a mistake, and no one listens. <laughs> I truly believe this is a race of genetically deaf creatures. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I mean, when I first read this comic, I, I, like I mentioned from the very beginning, the colors, the wordings, or the lettering, they, they took me out of the feel of the comic. And just reading it again and stuff, it's the story is not bad, but it has holes here and there. It's, it's not the best. It's not one of my favorites, but it's mediocre. It's much better than the previous one we did. Characters are portrayed as they are. Um, Applejack and Pinkie Pie are, well, like how they are in the show. I would give this to the comic is that it's harmless. Mm -hmm. At least it's not giving the children a bad moral. At least it's not telling them, hey, maybe you should go into your mom's kitchen and start mixing everything into a, until you make a lovely dessert or anything like that. Or you are not, you're supposed to be mean or fight with your, um, with your classmates or whatever. At least the comic isn't doing that. It's Mm -hmm. harmless for what it is, but it's also very empty. It's like a cake filled with air. It can look pretty, it may look pretty, but when you try to dig in, it just falls into itself. It, it's, it, it deflates. Yeah. I don't know. Are you sure this comic isn't going to inspire children to encase their peers in icing? Oh, God, no. Um, we, we could have the great frosting wars of 15. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, final, uh, final thoughts and that stuff. Well, we did say the final thoughts. Oh. If we, if you want us to give the, the movie, uh, a rating on numbers, I am giving this one a two out of five. Mm. Two out of five. Easy. All right. Whereas I, I just go with, would, would I recommend people to read it? No, I'd say skip this one. We have far better stories on the horizon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the awesomeness that is coming on, on issue number two. Yeah. For me, this yes. is just a meh. Yes. Next up, we have Discord and the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, James. <laughs> next week, yeah, comic is going to be the CMC. Yeah, the next comic is going to be the Friends Forever issue number two, starring the Cutie Mark Crusaders and Discord, written by Jeremy Whitley, with art by Tony Flicks and colors by Lauren Perry. Wow. Now, that one, we are going to talk about it next week. So, guys, uh, I hope you all enjoyed the review. This has been James Cork. And I am Norman Sanzo. And I am Silver Quill with a sound box. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. That's never going to get old. See you guys <laughs> next time. Bye-bye. Adios. Adios.